Tonight on Hip on the Spot News. We look at the latest open beta pass for DCS World. Vacation is over and we are back in the game. More performance improvements fixes that we require. And we still are waiting for the Sinai map release. This and more on how I play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to take a look at the latest developments in DCS World. So we are back in the studio after an extended weekend escape. Needed one and Natasha agreed as well. Last week we got an open beta update for DCS World that contains numerous performance related updates, particularly around the introduction of multi-threading. Numerous visual and audio updates have been made, with new tooltips for the F10 map, direction and speed vectors to help with navigation, many World War II era aircrafts have received a cockpit and external weapon sound update, plus improvements have been made to the implementation of thrust reversing for AI jet aircraft, as well as engine mode and deceleration tuning. And as always, multiple issues, bugs and errors have been corrected across the spectrum. So, glad to hear that for those multi-threading bugs we receive another batch of fixes. Also, when I read the patch notes, one of the most intriguing fixes was for the ground units. Check this out. Units dying with agony do not burn after explosion. Fixed. Hmm, interesting. Makes you wonder. Moving on with those performance improvements like crater scars from Bullets Impact got fixed so they don't drop our FPS over time. And the burning time of destroyed weapon depot is now limited to around 40-70 minutes instead of infinity. For the Viper, they fixed the RWR that could stop registering SAMs with multiple players in network play. Plus, they fixed the priority rings, they changed the display of targets on the RWR according to their lethality level, all together with an increased font size on the display. For the Hornet, they applied multiple fixes for the radar in STT and TWS. The time on target being too fast when setting ground speed, they applied a modification to the diamond slewing rate on the HUD to allow more precise slewing and for the attack format TDC to allow more rapid movement when designating targets, change range scale and so on. These are quality of life fixes that help improve our operations in the F-18C Hornets cockpit. The Apache got additional elements to controls indicator for FMC SCAS functions. When a hold mode is engaged, a blue outline will be displayed around the SAS authority region within the corresponding flight control axis that the hold mode is active. The blue indicator within the pitch roll axis will change format to indicate the sub mode of the attitude hold. Some changes are work in progress and some were needed for immersion, like the NVGs and iHats that could be enabled at the same time or the CPG able to select ads while using NVS. For the MI-24P Hind, they added a special option for the autopilot authority over pedals. Now, if disabled, the autopilot won't be able to take control over the anti-torque pedals and move them without pilot input, although 9% authority over yaw control is still there. Now be advised that disabling it will not make this system realistic. The real system autopilot has full control over the pedal axis but ED decided to implement this option as we are dealing with a simulator here and there are certain hardware and joystick limitations for each setup for our users so ample reasons to have this in. I couldn't agree more. They also added a special setting for the SPORWR volume tuning, a pedals micro switch button, keybind for toggle action and keybinds for the DISS Doppler navigation panel, plus new custom rocket and gun firing sounds. I like the new sounds. It seems that Petrovich approves. Petrovich also got some optimization of the incoming fire detection code. Code? What code? It's part of your training Petrovich. And they adjusted your target search pattern and geometry, eliminating long-distance non-relevant targets being included in the search results and list. Wait a minute, was I reporting non-important targets? Well, let's just say you do better now. Ah, so that's why they checked my eyesight. Ah, now makes sense. 
Even better, you can now scan a specific sector around point, getting more versatile in seeing partially visible targets. Хорошо, so better eyesight for me. Thank you. Now I can peek for... <clears throat> Let's not go there. Uh, okay, got it. Family friendly program. All right. Coming back to the improvements ED made for Petrovich, he will warn you about the target being obstructed and won't fire the ATGM if he thinks that target obstruction is too severe. He will also give you hints for approach if target is obstructed, determining if repeating approach from the relative to the current heading right or left side is advisable. Aha! Look who's getting approach advice from Uncle Petrovich. Bring your kneeboard paper and pen. You will need it. Moving on, the GF-17 has received 8 new liveries, new air-to-air -air radar modes and a manual sub-mode of the air-to-ground master mode for unguided weapons alongside many fixes plus updates to the external pilot model and the afterburner textures. Nice. The Mirage F1 has received a significant update with much work completed around the cockpit controls, animation and functionality. From Rasbam with Love we got fixes for the Harrier and updates to its HUD brightness control, air to ground bomb solution wind correction and they added the Rapier SAM to its RWR library. For the Mirage 2000 they added a realistic stopwatch, updated the sun visor in VR, the emergency landing gear handle and the normal and emergency deployment rates. Heat Blur brings new things for the Tomcat, like the new single player campaign, Operation Reforger 2 Flanking the Bear, a more realistic AOA Buffett schedule and major improvements for the B model performance characteristics in level flight acceleration, turn performance and top speed excess power. They also made the fuel tank's loads exclusively symmetric and vastly improved loadout possibilities, limiting many incorrect or impossible loadouts through mutual exclusion. For the A10C2 tank killer, the radar altimeter now works on roll angles up to 120 plus degrees when pitch angles are between 35 on altitude above 3000 feet and when pitch angles are between 45 degrees and altitude is below 3000 feet. Otherwise, maximum roll angles are reduced to 15 degrees, radar altimeter ceiling is now 5000 plus feet, not 5000 straight, plus fixes to the ARC 164 and 210 radios. And that's all the major additions and improvements with the latest open beta patch. I link the patch notes in the video description if you want to check out more. Moving on, the Strike Eagle gets another video from Natsu with a quick demo of the ASL fix since the HRM tutorial video. And two nasty destruction examples, oh, uh, did I say nasty, my bad, two lovely pictures of the Strike Eagle in flames. Looking good. So things are quiet and it's normal for the time being. We are still waiting to choose our winner for our giveaway of the C9 map by Henri Tech. With over 2000 entries, there's still a chance for one of you to win it. All you need to do is to be subscribed to our channel, like and comment on our videos and you will have a chance to be included in our giveaway. As mentioned before, our Discord members get an extra entry on the giveaway channel and of course our Patreon members receive an automatic participation with each video we publish, in anticipation of the CNICE map release. And that's it, thank you all for watching, remember to check our sponsor VR Rock for your VR blue ride protection and prescription lenses. Many thanks to our patrons that support our channel, Rhinox, Richard Burnside, Steven Adaschik, Pegasus24, Runan, Bish, Pewe AK Malone, Crash, Santiago Ordonez, Hobo, Dieter Nussbaumer, Tony Prince, Mr. D, Ian Masak, Moljam and Alex Pitts. Thank you guys for supporting our channel like this, we can keep up working full time with no distractions. And if you want to support us, feel free to use the thanks button here on YouTube, check our sponsor and become a patron. Remember to leave us a like if you find the video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.